Du, 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 du. Right, boys. Story time. So, it is January 2023. I've just turned 17 years old, and my mum says that she's got a surprise for me, saying that we're going to go out for the day. But I'll need my provisional driver's license for ID. And she won't tell me what it is. So I'm like, okay. Um, you know, I'm getting ready upstairs and stuff. And I hear someone come in to our front door. And my mum shouts me. And I'm sat on the bog. So I literally just shout, I'm on the toilet. Not knowing that there's a stranger stuck in our kitchen <laughs> waiting for me. So I go downstairs and there's this fella standing there. I shake his hand, say, nice to meet you. And my mum says, oh, this is my old school friend. And he's also your driving instructor. And I was just like, oh, okay. Because in the UK, you can drive at 17. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And we go out the door. She's like, right, there you go. Checks my driver's license, all solid. And away we are. I'm, you know, sat in the car, learning how things work. And we start driving. And we do a very, very fast 38 miles per hour on a 40 mile per hour road. Let's just say this, boys. I shat myself. <laughs> I was absolutely terrified that I was like part of this, you know. Essentially, I just thought this is a death machine. And every time I saw a pedestrian on the road, I just got those intrusive faults of what happens if I just, you know, have a slip of the hand and just run them over. Obviously, that never happened. But, you know, you get these thoughts when you're driving. I'm driving along and, you know, it's a successful first lesson, you know, no one's been killed, we're all right. I head home and I'm physically shaking. I literally have to sit down because it took so much wind out of me. It was so unexpected to have that driving lesson. I'm just sat in my chair like this, so what am I going to do? My mum's just laughing at me. And from then on, I started having weekly driving lessons. Now... How many driving lessons do you think it took or how long do you think it took me to be ready for my test and pass my dress test? Now, saying that I was started in January 2023, it took me nearly two years to be ready for my driving test. Well, not be ready for my driving test, but to pass my driving test. So for most people, they're ready in, you know, three to four months to be able to pass their test. But for me, I just kept getting things wrong. I kept having stressful lessons. So I started driving in January 2023 and I passed this year in September of 2024. So literally close to two years. And there's, I can't really pinpoint something exactly on why it took me so long. But to put it bluntly, I'm a very logics-based person. I would say I'm quite academic, you know, I overthink essentially like if someone gives me a problem I'll think of a solution you know there's different thoughts going through my head I'll think of multiple solutions now with driving it just requires a lot of common sense like it's almost as if you don't like of course you need to be focused when you're driving but you if you focus way too much put too much stress on yourself then you're going to cause an accident and I think that's what I did. I would overthink things way too much. I would, you know, rush into things thinking that in order to be good at driving, you have to switch gears fast and what have you. And there were so many instances where, <laughs> where we nearly died, honestly, when I'm on my driving test. I remember I'm driving down this 40 mile per hour road and there's a car parked on the right side of the road. And you know, I look around, you know, I'm driving, I look around this car to see if there's anything coming. And I can see this big van coming, right? So it's coming, it's in the middle of the road, trying to go past this car. I look at the space at the side of the road from which I can go to. And I think to myself, that's a big enough space. I can make that. So I, you know, I slow down. Obviously, it's a smaller gap, so I need to go slower. So I'm going through this gap. And just as we're about to approach, my driving instructor grabs the steering wheel, yanks us over to the left side of the curb. And he goes, well done, mate, you nearly got us killed. And I'm just there like, um, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. 
I honestly just thought that the gap was big enough, and it technically was. We got through the gap, but, you know, I'm assuming that if he didn't shift the steering wheel, we would have crashed or whatever. And I just started disliking driving. Driving was... Like, I didn't dread my driving lessons. Honestly, I have a growth mindset, right? So every time I did bad on a lesson, I'd obviously have that day where I just felt like shit because I'm just, you know, feeling... Just getting negative thoughts because I'm not, you know, progressing as fast as other people are not doing as good as I think I should. And obviously there's pressure on me from my parents because they're the ones that's paying for the driving lessons. And, you know, obviously the more and more uh, driving lessons we have, the more and more money we have to spend. But I've always had the growth mindset of, okay, I've done this thing wrong. I can build on it. And of course that's true. Although it took me a while, I was able to pass my driving test. Now, I did not pass first time is the problem. I passed on my third time. The first time I failed my driving lesson was for two reasons, right? The first, I, well, there was two reasons I failed. The first reason was that I'm going up a steep hill. And for those who don't drive, it's better to be in a lower gear when you're going there on a steep hill because, you know, the car can, ha it's better to handle the car essentially. So I'm driving up this steep hill. I'm in first gear. I'm going up the hill. And every time I've gone up a steep hill with my instructor, I've always been in second gear because um, I think the hill that we always used to do on, I'd always be in second gear anyway. So I'd be just going up in second gear and you're not really supposed to drive in first gear. So I'd be going up this hill in second gear and you know, I'd do that fine. So I'm driving up this hill in first gear, going about you know 17 miles per hour. It's a 20 mile per hour road. Obviously the engine's revving a bit, but you know we're going up the hill. And I just get the sudden thought of, oh, I could be in second gear, which wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong for me to be in second gear. But what I did was wrong. I, <laughs> I changed to second gear, but because we're on a very, very steep hill, I didn't have enough gas, enough speed to back up my decision. So I went from like 17 to less than 10 miles per hour very quickly. And I'm about to stall the car. I didn't stall the car. I stopped in the middle of the hill, changed to first gear and then went on away. The examiner failed me for that because I apparently held up, I think there was a oncoming car or something that had to stop and wait for me while I went away. So, you know, I failed for holding up traffic. And then the second thing was for a maneuver. Now in the UK driving test, you obviously do your independent driving, they'll give you directions, and then you have to perform the maneuver, which can be, um, reversing into a space, uh, driving into a space, parking up on the right side of the road and reversing two car spaces, which is the remover that I, maneuver that I got. There's, I think there's other maneuvers, but I can't remember them. I don't have to worry about that shit anymore. And I got the easiest maneuver, arguably, which is park on the right side of the road and reverse two car spaces. Piece of piss, right? So, you know, we're driving along and he said, okay, when it's safe to do so, park on the right side and reverse, etc., etc." So I see a place where I can reverse and I'm about to turn right and there's an oncoming car. Now, what would be the sensible thing to do in this situation? It would be to stop and wait for the car to pass and then go. But the car was going rel relatively slow. I think because it, it saw I was indicated right, so it was gonna stop for me. And it was going really slow. So I'm just not thinking, oh, I need to stop. I just go whoop in front of this car and I'm on the right side of the road. I obviously, you know, I didn't cause, you know, I didn't hit the car essentially, but I knew I'd failed at that point because the examiner just went, ooh, as in, what the hell are you doing, bro? You're a bit too close. So yeah, I failed for that as well. So that was my first driving test and I was just like, oh, frigging hell. Well, I can't be one of those great first time passes. My second test, <laughs> was even more annoying than that because it was for the slightest little thing. I remember I did the drive. I felt really confident in the drive. I'm thinking to myself, oh, I think I passed here. Dude pulls out his iPad, taps a few things. You know, we're in the test center. It's at the end of the test. He looks at it and I just see it say unsuccessful. I'm like, oh, it's like, I'm afraid. I'm afraid you've not been unsuccessful. Just tell me I failed, right? Don't sugarcoat it with you've been unsuccessful. Just tell me I failed, pal, come on. And what he failed me for was driving too close to a parked car. So essentially, I'm going down this road. There's cars parked on the left. There's no oncoming traffic on the right. And he said, well, 
You were a bit too close to the park cars. I thought the wing mirrors were going to touch. Did the wing mirrors touch? No, they didn't. So I'm not too close then. But hey, well. And he said, oh, you could have been a bit more to the right because there was no oncoming vehicles. And then you, you know, could have joined back to the left when there was no cars. Some stupid reason like that. So I'm just like, oh, for God's sake. Well, take three. And I passed on my third test with only two minor marks. There was a point where I thought I'd failed because I saw this traffic light on my right. I was waiting. I was in the middle of the road, went to turn right, and there were oncoming cars. And I'm waiting for the cars to stop coming through, and there's a traffic light on my right that's red. And I'm thinking, who is that traffic light for? And so I waited for a few seconds. I literally asked the examiner as well. I said, is that traffic light for us? Even though he can't tell me because, you know, it's an exam. He can't tell me the answers to stuff. So I'm like fuck it i just went through the traffic light and i'm like well that's the point where i could have failed but i just kept going the test as normal and i passed and i was just like thank the maker thank the lord thank whoever is up there thank you so much because i'm not gonna lie i think my driving instructor was starting to get annoyed at me and it was sort of just that kind of teacher student relationship where they just kind of think you're a bit of an idiot because i don't know what it is man i any time i done bad on a driving test i would sound like i was about to cry like i wasn't going to cry because i'm not a you know very emotional sort of guy like a dog could freaking die in a film and i'll just be there like dry, dry as all and but it's like when I feel a bit demoralized, I might be, you know, talking like this and I'm like, OK, yeah, which sounds like I'm about to cry. So I just, you know, doing these driving lessons, feeling like shit, fail my driving test two times. And it would have been very easy for me to give up. You know, I disliked driving and there's no reason why I can't get the bus forever. Right? It's fine. You know, when I earn enough money, you know, get that YouTube money, I can get my own chauffeur. So it won't even matter. But I guess the moral of this story is even if you're feeling like shit, even if the results aren't coming in right now, if you think like it's just not worth it, it's not worth all the stress, just keep going. Honestly, I could have easily just quit in the first six months of driving and said, this is not for me. I don't think my parents would have let me do that. But, you know, imagine I just said, I'm done with this now, I'm finished. I wouldn't have been able to get that valuable skill because with driving it sort of gives me more value in a sense i'm sort of more valuable to employers i'm more valuable to girls because you know come on a guy with a car you know you gotta be careful what kind of car though don't get a piece of shit because you know eh, hey well but a guy with a car is obviously more attractive because he can do more things he can meet more people he can do more the fun things and honestly that is what motivated me to drive it gives me a more interest in life i can meet with more people i can explore the world more i don't have to be wasting valuable time waiting for the bus i can go to the gym in 10 minutes instead of taking 20 or 30 minutes and then drive home instead of having to wait for the bus for another 30 minutes and then it takes a 20 minute journey i can start investing more time i have more hours in the day and that builds up i can do more about valuable things like this so I hope you've enjoyed that little anecdote of the numerous times that I could have died on a driving test. Was there also another time I could have died? I think I was on a 50 mile per hour road and I was driving way too close to the curb. And my driving instructor told me that if you hit the curb at 30 miles per hour, then the car will flip. I don't know if he was telling me that just, you know, as in like a cautionary tale, just, you know, exaggerating, trying to not get me to do it. But my God, I stayed away from that curb after that. <laughs> So I guess it worked. But anyway, I guess, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully we're getting a car that as we, there. hopefully we're getting a car this week. I need to slow down my speech, you know. I've realized that when I'm speaking way too fast, I mess up my words. So we need to slow down, slap, slow down, hydration break. So yeah, it's been three weeks, I think since I passed my driving test, something about that. I can't remember how long it's been. And I'm hopefully going to get a car this week because the only time that my parents and stuff have been available to like take me to see cars and things. So hopefully we're going to have a set of wheels soon, boys. But for now, take care. Sayonara.